ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with Me, Tony Mo. And we're here today to kick off the very first day of the Halo 5 Guardians multiplayer beta. Uh, the beta is going to be running over the next three weeks, actually. We're going to see new game modes, new maps, new weapons introduced to the beta as time goes on. But they've kicked off the very first day with return of two of the maps we saw in the early beta, that being Empire and Truth. We also have the classic sort of arena 4v4 Slayer game mode with the starting weapons being the Magnum and the AR. Uh, all of that's going to start to change. They're going to switch things up over the beta. I don't know if they're planning on just adding on more, if we're going to see, you know, just the primary one swapped in and out. But however it works, we're going to be able to check out a lot of new stuff over the course of the next three weeks. Now, over the course of the beta, I plan on putting up some, you know, raw gameplay videos, sort of highlighting some of the new maps, uh, some of the new, you know, elements that the game has added that I still haven't really had a full... Full opportunity to show you guys firsthand things like the ground pound and the shoulder charge. Um, and of course, we'll be talking about the new maps and how I feel about them, but I don't want to spend too much time on that. We'll probably do one, maybe two videos actually talking about all the new maps once the beta is done and how I felt with the maps as a whole and of course our time with the beta. But what I did want to do during the course of the beta was spend a little bit more time uh, making videos that kind of help describe some of the key elements to being successful as a team in Halo 5 Guardians in the multiplayer and uh, this doesn't you know this isn't really just solely a Halo 5 Guardians multiplayer thing because a lot of people look at that and say well the game just came out how can you even say you know I think that a lot of the tactics that I used to use you know when I played with a with a solid team back in the days of Halo 2 are, are still very relevant and actually are even more relevant than ever uh, now that we have Halo 5 Guardians here it's it's really a return to a lot of the great elements from the franchise's past past with a lot of uh, new elements that have really been refined and tweaked to make sure that the game still feels like Halo, you know, it, it doesn't, it didn't, it's not trying to do what Halo 4 did, which was try to be something completely different. It understands that it's Halo, it knows what it needed to do, but it, it you know, it still has a lot of nice fresh touches. So, I wanted to kick it off by talking specifically about the 4v4 Arena Slayer mode. Now this is a mode that, when I talk about this, we're talking about playing with an actual team. I strongly recommend playing with a team, if at all possible, during the course of the beta and of course when the game goes live in November. Playing Lone Wolf in this, not recommended. I can't see why a lot of people would want to, uh, you know, especially when we talk about the full release where there are going to be plenty of other game modes where you can play with randoms and in a more public setting. But this is going to be the ranked 4v4 mode. This is serious business. If you care about maintaining a rank in this, you're going to have to be successful as a team not just an individual, because losing as a team, he ranks you. <laughs> Winning as a team ranks you up. It doesn't matter if you went 25 and two, if your team lost, you're getting deranked. So if you want to keep up that Onyx badge or you know keep pushing to semi-pro or pro, you're gonna have to do well as a team. Now, one of the things that a lot of new players instantly feel when they hop into Halo as a whole, you know, back to the days of Halo 2 even, and I'm sure it's gonna be the same thing with, with Guardians, is that they have to be you know, on the top of the leaderboard, getting all the kills, and when they don't, they get very upset. My, my one friend was much like this. He's not a very talented uh, first-person shooter player, I guess is the best way to say it. He's not quick on the trigger, he's not very accurate, and he plays on a ridiculously huge TV that has a lot of latency issues. But that doesn't mean that he can't have a good time with myself and my brother and, you know, and any other, anybody else we decide to drag into our team and still be effective. Uh, in fact, in Halo, I feel that you can be relatively effective as a teammate without ever actually getting a complete kill. Um, and that is because simply dealing damage in this new 4v4 Slayer mode is a huge support to your team. I mean, if I'm number one on the leaderboard and I went 20 and two, I can almost guarantee you it was because someone else on my team had like 15 assists. Um, dealing damage whenever possible and wherever possible is the number one thing you can do as any type of player, whether it be a veteran player or a new player in the beta, uh, more specifically, or in Halo in general. You know, you have a Magnum on you, for example. Maybe you didn't have the opportunity to pick up a BR or a DMR yet, and you see a target running across the map, you have line of sight, you know you can hit him, you're at range. Fire off as many rounds as you can. <laughs> Three or four bullets into the back of a team, uh, you know, back of an enemy is better than none. And there's a good chance that your teammate may perhaps encounter that person, or maybe they'll encounter them because you did a vocal call out and said, hey, just tag this guy with three Magnum shots, his shield is low, he's coming around your way. Your teammate happens to have a BR, a couple headshots, boom, he's done. You've managed to gain a kill, and both of you are alive. Um, if you actually watch, you know, professional teams, uh, you know, guys like Evil Geniuses and, you know, so so on and so forth, play Halo. You know, watch old matches, watch stuff from HCS. 
you'll see that running and gunning, even though you can do it relatively well in Halo 5 now with the new sprint mechanic, is not their go-to, you know, set of uh, play styles. It's not what you want to do. You know, heavy team-based, you know, uh, maneuvers and focusing on where the enemy team is, what they're doing, what weapons they have, and just putting damage wherever you can is how they win games. Now, maybe not everybody wants to take the game that seriously, but again, we're talking about a 4v4 arena game mode. There's going to be teams out there that are going to start taking it that seriously, and if your team doesn't start to take it even at least a little bit seriously, you're not going to have a good time. At the end of the day, winning in something like 4v4 Slayer is where the fun comes from. Losing over and over, you're not having fun. This isn't that kind of game. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say it's not about winning because it is. It's all about winning. It's all about winning. That's that's how you're going to have a good time. So uh, that's kind of the point of this video, again, to help you guys focus on some of the smaller elements that are often overlooked. And damage is number one. Remember that. When you're playing the game, put damage on any target that you can whenever you can. Now, of course, there's sort of the other part that ties into that, and that is communication between your team. But we'll talk about that in a second. Because the second part of doing damage is making sure that you have effective tools to do it. Don't get me wrong, the assault rifle, great weapon. The magnum, really great weapon. They're both more useful than they've ever been, um, apart from the Halo 1 magnum, but that's nonsense. Let's not talk about that. Um, however, there are the, there's the battle rifle and the DMR. It spawns, they both spawn in multiple locations on both of the maps currently available in the beta, Empire and Truth, and you should be obtaining them whenever possible. At the start of the match, during the match, make sure that you have at least one, if not two of those weapons on your person at all time, on your Spartan at all time. Uh, they're going to allow you to put more damage out more quickly, and in that rare opportunity where you do see a target that you can only engage with one or two bullets, one or two shots from the BR or the DMR is a lot more damaging than one or two shots from something like the pistol or the AR. So remember where they are, make a mental note, obviously the first couple matches you play you're not going to know where these things are, make a mental note of where they are, try and obtain them as often as possible, and then use them to deal damage to the enemy team. The other side of all of this, all of this, all of talking about damage and picking up power weapons and you know, the battle rifle and the D-arm is useless if you choose to not communicate with your team. It's great that you decided to tag that guy twice in the back, but you didn't tell anybody about it, and he ran around the corner and let his shields regenerate. Communication is key in these situations. Make whatever call out you can. Do whatever you can to help your team understand where your target is, what he's doing, how much health he has. Just make it known to your team whenever possible. And you want to voice it in general. Uh, I see a lot of people in Halo when I was playing the beta, the early beta more specifically, and you see this in competitive games in general, they waste a lot of time trying to find out which member of their team is closest to the target. Like, hey, Dave, you're right by that guy. No, I mean, he's coming around the corner. Next thing you know, their teammate's dead because the guy had a sword. You know, just call it out in general. <laughs> let your entire team absorb the knowledge and then let them all make their own individual, con you know, choices on the situation. You can't, you can't play and think as every member on your team. You just need to do what you can to make sure that you're providing your team with as much information as possible. And they need to be doing the same thing to you. It's that sort of cross communication and that constant transferring and sharing of intel based on what's going on in the map. It's going to let your team be more effective. And at the end of the day, just be more victorious. It's going to let you come out with more wins, less frustration, more fun at the end of the night. So remember those elements, damage, communication, weapon placement, very important elements. Now, the final part of all of that, which ties in with weapon placement, of course, is the power weapons on the new maps. This is Halo 5. No more Halo 4, no more loadouts, no more stupid AirPod weapon drop-ins. Think back to the days of Halo 2. Everybody's starting with ARs and Magnums for the most part on this classic 4v4 mode anyways. You need to pick up the power weapons on the map. In the case of Empire, two sniper rifles, one on each side of the map. And in the case of Truth, one energy sword or Prophet's Bane as this new variant is called, stationed at the center of the map. Know where they are. Know where they are at the beginning of the map, do what you can to obtain them at the start of the map, uh, start of the, the match, and do whatever you can to obtain them throughout the match. Um, as I talked about in one of my previous videos, there are now countdown timers. They let your team know, and the enemy team know, when these weapons are going to be spawning throughout the map. Throughout the match. I keep saying map. Throughout the match. Do not ignore these timers. Do not give up the Prophet's Bane to the other team. Do not give up either of the sniper rifles, or even worse, both of the sniper rifles to the enemy team. That's just ridiculous. You really need to focus on this. Um, a lot of new players not really understanding that. Maybe people coming over from Call of Duty, wherever you're coming from. I'm not trying to judge anybody's first person shooter background. Just remember that they are important. Learn where they are so you can do whatever you need to do as a team to pick them up at the start of the match. Um, the big thing is Empire. I mean, that's one of the more difficult ones. You have two, you have two weapons there. 
Now, the easy thing is to say, all four of us should just run to one sniper, and maybe that's the best strategy. Maybe you're better off obtaining that sniper and then letting your team go ahead and sort of flush out the other team and pick up their sniper afterwards. But maybe you want to do something like send three guys to one sniper, clean it up, and send the other one to sort of just harass the enemy team until your team can start to, you know, sort of join in the fight. There's a ton of strategies with any of the maps that are going to show up in the beta. Um, you know, Empire is just one situation. And of course, the Prophet's Bane on Truth is like an epic starting gunfight. It is very much a breakout. Uh, you should actually be spawning on top of a BR on both sides of the map. Make sure someone on your team is picking that up as quickly as possible and starting to deal out headshots. Headshots, headshots, headshots. At the same time, maybe your team will start launching grenades. Make sure, of course, that you are not exposed to any incoming grenades or battle rifle fire. Start flanking the team. Do whatever you can to try and obtain that Prophet's Bane early on. But whatever you do, don't just leave the other team to pick it up. Don't just, hey, skedaddle, left and right, forget about it. Um, the Prophet's Bane is a seriously effective tool, especially when in the right hands. And you'll see a lot of players hide it, you know, pop out with it. I I played a match where we went 19 to 50, and we were the 19, because their team had the Prophet's Bane the entire game. It's important. Power weapons are important. They help drive combat flow. And I'm really happy that they're back, so pay attention to them. They're really, really important. So what do we talk about? Communication, damage, supporting your team, power weapons, weapon locations. Communication being the biggest one and damage being the second biggest one. I just really wanted to stress that because I feel, again, a lot of new players are intimidated. Grab some people that you know. Maybe even meet up with some randoms on the internet. Head over to Reddit. Head over to the forums. Find someone who wants to play with another group of people. I always see people saying they have no friends. I don't have any friends who play the game. Dude, there's people all over the internet who want to play the game with other people. I'm not saying that you have to just, you know, hook up with the very first group of people who decide they want to play the game with you, but there's plenty of nice people to meet. It's just like real life. There's plenty of shitty people out there. There's plenty of nice people out there. Find the right ones. Put yourself a nice, put just put together a nice little team for yourself to play the game at launch and of course to play the beta. You're just going to have more fun. Cannot stress that enough. Playing with friends, playing with people that you can talk with and communicate with has a more enjoyable experience pretty much 110% of the time. So do yourself that favor. If you guys have any other questions about the beta, about what I'm talking about here, about strategies, any of, sort, any of that sort of thing, feel free to let me know. Ask me in the comment section below. The beta, again, still has three, three weeks. This is like the longest beta ever. New game modes, new maps. We're going to be checking them all out. A lot of cool new stuff, Halo stuff. Halo stuff. Um, coming up throughout the weeks. Uh, for those of you who have stuck around this long, Elite Dangerous is going to be coming soon. I'm really taking my time on those videos, so I just want to make it sort of the best of the best. And uh, a big thank you to all of the new subscribers. So many of you guys. So many of you guys. There's there's so many comments on my new videos that I actually have to like dedicate an hour of my day to reading them. So that's actually genuinely exciting. But that's it. I'll stop rambling. Uh, I can't recommend the Halo Beta, uh, you know, enough. Uh, hopefully, hopefully. Xbox, Microsoft, they open this beta up because right now it's only people who own the Master Chief Collection and I think that's rubbish. That's great. It was a nice little pre-order or purchase incentive for those people who wanted the Master Chief Collection, but Xbox and Halo, it's like peanut butter and jelly. Everyone should be able to check it out. So hopefully they open it up over the next couple weeks. But uh, if you never get a chance to play it, come back to the channel. I'll have plenty of content for you guys to sort of feast your eyes on, help you kind of, you know, create your own opinion on what you think of the latest and uh, hopefully the greatest, we can only hope, um, entry in the Halo series. Till then, I'll see you in the next one.